hello, hello, and welcome to In The Mix with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega. And I'm excited, because I'm coming to you from my hometown, New York City. <laughs> it's my honor to be your host today on TBN Salsa. Thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, as well as Samuel Rodriguez, for another opportunity to boast on our God. With this show, it's my heart to highlight people in movies, music, media, and ministry that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from heaven, right? Well, it also says that God has given to each and every one of us a gift to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. And today, I get to introduce you to a couple that their life story is just it's touched so many already and is continue right now as we speak. There are theaters all over the world that are going to be witness to this incredible story, the impact of this couple. But before I get into it, I want to tell you a little bit about the film that's on their lives. It's indivisible. It's the inspiring new film about families finding the faith and love to fight through hardships that threaten their marriages. It's based on the true story of a decorated army chaplain haunted by battlefield experiences that put his marriage in jeopardy. And it doesn't end there, but it also tells the story about how their resilience as a family and they bravely fight to reintegrate with each other and love ultimately wins. So before we get into them, I want to pitch to the trailer of this film in theaters now, and then we'll get to meet the people behind this. Check it out. So today, third and fourth platoons are gonna sweep our next door neighbors again. See if we can slow down the welcome gifts coming over the wall. Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! I'd like for you to have more non-combat experience first, but a military-wide shortage of chaplains says otherwise. Well, I signed up to be where the need is, sir. 15 months without this face. Get off! We've got to move! Get down on the board, order! You're gonna be okay. They can call it the family readiness group, but nobody's ever really ready. Divorce is filed in the last three months. That soldiers losing families and having nothing to go home to is not the stabilizing force we need around here. Really? Just let me in. That's with other people's lives, just part of your job description or something. I mean, kind of. Okay, yeah, well, my marriage is none of your business. You don't know anything about me or my family. Hey, who's gonna take this one? They hit us with two RPGs, sir. Get her down! Uh, couldn't save the chaplain. So I guess you do whatever it is you do. I just feel like there's something more that's happening between us. It's not between you two. It's between you two and that war. Oh, we got two on the rooftop. Get us out of here. Take them out. I trusted in God to protect those men, and he did. No, you trusted in God to do what you thought he ought to do. I want to know why. I want to know why you somehow have it in you to show up for those men when you refuse to do it for your own wife and kids. Because those men need me. laid their snares, and along the path, they have set traps to catch me. Give it to them, Chaplain. You are my strong deliverer. Right. Yep. You shield my head in the day of battle. Right. Yep. Amen? Amen. 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 Rescue is standing beside you. Well, the trailer looks so amazing. I'm pretty sure you're, you're excited. You can't wait to see it. But I have the honor of sitting with the people behind this incredible film. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TBN Salsa. De the decorated Army chaplain, Darren Turner, and his lovely wife, Heather Turner. Thank you for being here on Thank TBN you for Salsa. having us today. Glad this to be great. here. I had the uh, privilege of watching the film before it even hit theaters. Um, and I was just so impacted by your stories. I feel like many times we'll see stories of military families um, 
but it doesn't have the same redemptive theme that your story did. It, it just really, really touched me. So before we get into your full story, tell us a little bit about your backgrounds as believers, you know, as Christian people, because when, from what I see in the film, because I know not, not everything in Hollywood is exactly how it happens in real life. From what I saw in the film, you guys go into this, when you go into the military, you're already a believing family. That's correct. So tell us a little bit about the background story of your faith. I became a Christian um, my first year of college where a, a person in campus ministry, college campus ministry just shared Jesus. the gospel with me and she befriended me and she just continued to share with me for a full year until I finally, the Lord just opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I believed then and it wasn't until years later that we met after okay. college. Yeah. Yeah. Same for me. I, I became a believer in college. I grew up wow. going to church, but I wasn't yeah. A believer at that point, so I went to college uh, with the intent of partying, and successfully <laughs> did that oh. until that uh, until that was no longer appealing in my life. And mm -hmm. God hunted me down, and uh, it was in camp. It was through a campus ministry like Heather that's, that I that's became just a believer. So inspiring for me because I didn't grow up Christian either, and I went on the road. I didn't really go to college. I went on, on tour as a mm. pop star. So I did my wild things there. And I'm just so, I love how God gets a hold of us. We're all in different, you guys weren't even in the same, you know, scenario and God reached to both of you. He did the same thing with me. So that's just a shout out to comp yeah. college <laughs> campus ministry. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, so then you guys come together and you're a believing family. Mm -hmm. Um, did you always dream to get into the military? Was this something that just kind of you figured, let me do this for my family? How did that come out? So after I became a believer, I went overseas for a year, uh, spent a year teaching English in the country of Mongolia. If you wow. can believe that. Came back from that and had a, had a real desire to serve in the campus ministry that I became a believer in. So that's when I met Heather. She was oh, a recruiter. I love that. She was a recruiter for the organization that was sending English teachers overseas. Mm. And we met and got married that same year and did campus ministry for about five years before joining the military. Yeah. So now your story is on the big screen. Like, tell us just about that. Was it something that you ever anticipated would happen after, you know, after conquering it. Cause obviously when you're in the thick of it, you don't even see how to get out of it sometimes yeah. only by the grace of God. And, and you'll see that in the film, how the thick of it. And I think that's what I like. Most stories will give you the beginning, the after, they don't show you like the actual struggle. You know, there's scenes in the film where Heather, you know, you're letting him know, we also need you, your family, you mm. know? Um, but how is it seeing your life on the big screen? It's surreal. It's <laughs> definitely nothing we expected. Um, but when we, when the producers, um, John, uh, David and Esther Evan, approached us about it and shared their heart, and just we really saw their humility and desire to honor the Lord and brag on the Lord mm. and honor the military, we yeah. we fully trusted them in telling the story well. Yeah, Darren, I want to ask you because in the film we will see, you will see just the struggle that a lot of soldiers have with PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling you off camera, we did a program recently where we talked about the suicide rate in veterans mm -hmm. or, in, or in active duty members or things like that. Talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, going into the military as a chaplain, which is a beautiful, you know, to me, that's like the best role you can have in the military, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm married to <laughs> a pastor, so a little bias there. Um, Tell us just about that. Did, had you ever anticipated that it would be what it was and, and having to come face to face with some of these real life issues and how, as a minister, how do you kind of approach that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, trauma is a massive topic, right? Mm -hmm. So PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. um, think about that. Think about that phrase, post-traumatic. It's after trauma is going to create some stress and sometimes it creates a disorder. Mm -hmm. So uh, my character in Indivisible uh, had PTSD, no doubt. Yeah. The intrusive thoughts, uh, yeah. waking up in the middle of the night thinking you were getting attacked, that sort of thing. Um, my, my experience wasn't quite that extreme. I definitely yeah. think I had post-traumatic stress, yeah. but it, it didn't cross it over turn... into the disorder. So I came back angry, frustrated, a lot of the same symptoms. Yeah, did you 
going into it were, cause I, in the film, you, we see kind of, he went into it innocently, like thinking, you know, I have Jesus and yeah. I'm gonna conquer these demons of, you know, depression or help these men of, you know, these men in the military and their families. And, you know, there's a scene where, and I think it's in the trailer, where a stack of papers is put on the table before your character in the film, this happened to you probably in real life, where he's like, these are the level of marriages. These are the, like, this is, these are the marriages that are not working out right now because of the stress that these soldiers are encountering. Was that something, you know, that you, how, how did you prep for it? How did you, eventually when facing the reality, how did you get through it? Like, well, I want a little bit more of your experience back then. Yeah, so transitioning from campus ministry, I was in a church setting surrounded by a lot of Christ, Christians, really, uh, jumping into the military chaplaincy where it's more, I would equate it more of like a mission field. Um, so that transition itself was difficult. And then you're right, there were a lot of divorces um, happening during that deployment. And yeah. when my commander puts that set of folders down, that, that actually happened. There were a lot of divorces that happened during that deployment. And so it, it's, it's difficult. Um, my, my heart was, was broken by seeing just the, the, the heartbreak that was in soldiers' lives and their families. And as a minister, how do you prep for that? What do you do? How do you pray? Yeah. Because I know even me now as a pastor's wife, I feel like a whole can opened. Like yeah. I've been an evangelist for years, but now as a pastor's wife, it's like the things that people unload on you and they just kind of are hoping, I hope you have a word because yeah. I am at the brink and it's about to be over. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I would pray with soldiers. Yeah. If, if they came to me, they were looking for some sort of spiritual guidance. Of um, so I would pray with them, share scripture with them, but ultimately uh, th they have to decide they want that for themselves and yeah. so does their spouse if yeah. they want to get through it. And the Lord is ready I was gonna say, to yeah. meet them. And the Holy Spirit does the rest. Absolutely. No one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws them. Amen. And so when the Spirit's drawing somebody, I have a tremendous amount of hope for that, for that marriage and relationship. Amen. Heather, I have to ask you, um, being on the other side, I mean, there's so many things to ask, really. Just, first of all, being the, the wife of someone who's about to go out into a deployment. <laughs> you know, that's terrifying within itself. Um, just kind of... What was it, did, is this something you felt like your family was called to, so you played the role of being that supportive wife for your husband? Absolutely, we were both so excited to jump into this wow. role that we were fully confident the Lord had called us to and just couldn't wait to see what that journey was gonna look like and see the things that the Lord would might do, hoped would we hoped would happen. Yeah. And um, and all of that it did. I mean the Lord worked amazingly during that that time in and through us. Um, it's just not always wrapped in the package that we expect it to show up in. <laughs> That's always the case, right? Yeah. You're just like, I really pictured this going another way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to ask you too, now being on the other side, um, while he's away and in the film we see your character just meeting with the other wives and the wives who were on the other side of that those divorce threats mm -hmm. or fed up or they even knew what to expect. Oh, he's going to come back messed up. And here I am with the kids and having to do everything again. If you can kind of share with us, I think it's a really important thing um, for there. I know there are military wives out there. There are people that are not, they don't have someone like you guys. Or, or And I'm grateful for the film because I feel like the film is going to open that up. Oh, there, there are support groups. There's other things that we can do. But if there are people out there that have struggled have bec or even fell victim to this type of world, what kind of stuff can you, can you share just about your journey and how you got through with the other wives? I would say that for me, uh, understanding who I am in Christ or understanding who we are in Christ is the key for a successful marriage because so much of my time early in our marriage, you know, I really turned Darren, it made Darren into an idol and made our marriage an idol. And so everything in my life revolved around what he thought of me mm. and what the success of my marriage said about me. So I think understanding whose I am and what he thinks about me and what he says about how I'm approved before him um, 
that makes all the difference because then you're no longer looking to someone else to uh, be responsible for your emotional well-being. That's too much to it too is. much to give yeah. another person. Yeah. And so, when you know who you are in Christ, mm -hmm. then you're free to bless other people without trying to suck life out of yeah. the people mm -hmm. around you. And kind of extend the grace that they need. Absolutely. Um, let Let me ask you this too, because I also know that. For a lot of women, not even military women, um, you know, sometimes, or even men, you'll be in a relationship where your spouse is dealing with anxiety, depression, being haunted by some trauma that happened. I mean, I probably think every family in the world has something like this. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the things that you did to kind of help Darren when he came back and he was, I mean, he didn't have the disorder, but he had the, the post-traumatic stress. And I don't know if this was actually happened, but in the film we see he, he sees the death of someone and it really messed him up. It was an innocent person. You know, as a spouse, I know we're kind of, you know, we're their helpmate and we're there to walk through life with them. And I know it can be really hard to help support. What are some of the things that you even did? Uh, as a support in, in for folks like that, I think just making sure that you that they know that you can handle their mess mm -hmm. is so important that they can unload on you and it not rock your world wow. to where you know you can't they don't feel the freedom to share the things that might break your own heart mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. just leave those bridges intact for them to be able to communicate difficult things that you may not want to hear. And I, I made the mistake of not sharing a lot of my own trauma because I didn't think she could handle it. And so I ran to my buddies who I deployed with and that kind of started our vicious cycle of me running from my marriage and Heather running after me. Oh. Yeah, it was yeah. not a good way to handle that situation. I think that's just a great lesson on communicating in a marriage period, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we, I think we, we I don't know why we tend to do that. I think it's in our nature to kind of do that, try to protect our loved one from what it is we're feeling. But I, I find it, I even talk about it a lot with young people who struggle with suicidal thoughts and things like that. It is unpacking. Mm -hmm. Unpacking is very important. And I do believe a lot of the soldiers and things like that, they don't unpack, they don't share mm -hmm. with people that can really be that support system for them. And it does end up, it takes a dark turn. Karen, I want to ask you now, as a minister in the military, <laughs> um, I'm a minister, I've been a minister in the streets of Brooklyn, which can be pretty hard too, <laughs> but as someone who is representing Christ in, um, you know, in, in an environment where it's just like, you know, it's a bunch of guys or there's girls too, um, but I'm just picturing you with the guys and, you know, they, they want to drink and they want to party and they want to kill things and, you know, like the machismo kind of attitude. It's kind of hard sometimes to insert the love of Jesus or, and, and, and we see in the film how um, you had, you know, some type of resistance from some people that were not about all right, pastor, get away from me with that chaplain stuff, you know, or whatever. But then there were people that you actually were able to reach with the gospel. Talk about being a minister in the military and just kind of your challenges. From this side, I think about just, you know, the, being a minister in, in New York is hard. <laughs> um, but I can't even imagine in the military, you know. So the military is a great place to share the gospel. Wow. And here's why. These men and women have signed up to die. Wow. They have volunteered to die. Oof. They have raised their hand and said, here I am, send me. They would give their life for you and me if called upon. Yeah. So who does that That's sound like? That's scripture. I'm like, who that is that scripture like? right there. They are living the gospel life. Even if they don't believe in self-sacrifice, they're doing it. Yeah. And so transitioning to share the hope and the love of Jesus Christ, it's right there in front of them. Wow. And, and first responders do the same thing. People who run to chaos, whether it's the military, first responders, yeah. people who are in a help type of job, mm -hmm. even social workers, the people who run to chaos, wow. they are living a life of sacrifice and, yeah. and they're displaying the gospel. That's that servanthood mentality. It's true. Absolutely. My husband's a veteran too. And I, you know, I often think he joined the military after 9-11 because he and you know unlike others because you're like oh my gosh we're at war you know he felt there's no way that I could 
just sit here. I have to go defend my country and save my people. And, you know, he wasn't a Christian at the time. Mm -hmm. And you think, wow, like, what? Who does that? <laughs> it's just like, you were made for this. Yeah. I tell him, you were made for ministry. So, yeah, I'm always so grateful. And that's why it's actually heartbreaking what we hear sometimes when military people transition back into civilianhood and just the, the lack of support. But I'm always so grateful mm. for our military and our veterans and those that are willing to do that because mm. it is a reflection of Christ. Mm. I love that. Darren, I want to ask you... Um, just thinking about, I was thinking, how can we relate your life to what kind of we're, where we are now, right? And um, seeing things that are just traumatizing, obviously not to the same degree, but I do think we're in an age where you can go on social media and see some awful mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. You know, we see kids getting beat up. We see people dying. We see, we turn on the news and I am depressed after it, seriously. Mm -hmm. Like I have to go into spiritual mm -hmm. battle and fight like, Lord, you know, we need you. Advice that you can give to people in this day and age. I'm even thinking about those that are thinking about joining the military or thinking of doing something that can help change the narrative. Mm -hmm. What do you say to us? Because <laughs> I'm in that category. Yeah, I, the, the starting point is the word of God. That is the truth. That is the eternal mm -hmm. truth. The news, social media, you and I, physically, all of this is temporary. Mm -hmm. The thing that is permanent is the word of God. And his opinion of us is paramount to other people's opinions of us. So we have to know what God thinks about us. We have to know what he has done for us and, done, and will do through us if we're going to overcome all the negativity that's out there. Yeah, amen. All right, well, we got so deep. <laughs> but I do want to share another a clip. Um, and you hear in this clip some of the actors. that I, I, I titled it a faith featurette because you'll hear some of the actors talk about playing your incredible story and just how it impacted them. So check this out, and then we'll be back. Master 2, we are pinned down the northeast corner. Chef, we've got to move. Hey, hey, you're going to be OK. I'm always drawn to redemption stories. And I read the script, and I was like, this is exactly the kind of story that I want to tell. A faith-based film that was focusing on military and their families, I just said, I'm, I'm in. You see a lot of stories that focuses on the soldiers. What's so engaging about this movie in particular, you're able to see it from a woman's perspective. This film is not just about military life. It's about struggles that we all face, seeing how these characters use the armor of God in their own lives. That can be an example to say, you know what, no matter what war I'm dealing with inside, God will help you overcome those situations. God heals all these different wounds in all these different places. It's a great story of redemption. It's also a message that helps people even more because it is real. If people walk out of the theater, if they have a glimmer of hope when hope feels lost, we've done our job. And I think this story accomplishes that. So guys, I have to ask you, <laughs> how is it seeing people play your lives? I mean, for me, I'm a big Grey's Anatomy fan. So I was like, I was in immediately as soon as I saw these actors in the film. I didn't know what it was about, but I'm like, I love Sarah Drew. I love, you know, all these people. How was it seeing them play you? And were you like, ooh, I'm happy that they chose them to play me? <laughs> this is so surreal. I can't even <laughs> explain how surreal and strange it is. We've seen the movie a few times. Yeah. Uh, we got to actually visit the, the set when awesome. they were filming a, a little while ago. And to hear someone say my wife's name, who's not me, and to hear <laughs> someone call out my children's name, who is not me, is really strange. Wow. It, it, it hasn't gotten unstrange. It's still strange. But <laughs> our hope is that this project, Indivisible, will be a blessing to people. Yeah. Yeah, the family and, and the, the stress and everything about it. Yeah, it was really neat to get to meet Justin and Sarah and felt like they knew our story before we even got there, of course. <laughs> so we connected really well, but they're re they were really passionate about the role. And it wasn't just 
uh, it was a blessing to them too, from what we understood. Yeah, that it was. This, they were really invested in these roles and it was more than just um, a, you know, an objective role for them. They really had their hearts into it and took experiences from their own life uh, to really bring to life the story. And the acting is phenomenal, yeah. like really. And you know, sometimes you, you, you cringe or you're afraid because it's a faith, there's faith in the film, so you think maybe it's cheesy. It, this is not one of those things. They were phenomenal. These are like the real deal. Um, okay, we only got a couple seconds left, but what are you hoping people take from the film? And if you have a last word of advice for couples getting through any hard situation to come out together in it, what would you say? Yeah, I, I would hope that people feel the freedom uh, to be recognized where they are in their own journey, that it's okay to be messy because God already knows. And it's, it's our privilege to be able to show our own brokenness and the reality of what uh, our situation looked like. But there's hope because God is able. He is bigger than all of our mess. Yeah, we are able to approach the throne of grace with confidence. Take our broken and lost, lost selves to the Lord and, and He is able, He is willing and able to meet us there and to restore us and to restore hope, to restore healing. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for being on TV and Salsa. Make sure you go out and see Indivisible in theaters now. It's amazing. Take your families. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.